Hi, everyone. I want to talk about a revelation I got this morning in prayer. I was, uh, the Holy Spirit showed me a, a, to look up a particular Bible verse in Isaiah. And as I was flicking through to it, my Bible fell open to this page. And this is what I want to show you. I'll just show you my Bible uh, with it. I've got notes all over this, but it's Isaiah 26, 3, and I'll explain these notes. So this is how you keep perfect peace in these times. Now, I don't know where you're at at the moment, but I know that at the moment, I'm really taking, there's a faith step that I'm taking, which is quite significant. And, and it's really, it's like, this is a big faith step. And uh, this verse is just so appropriate. Isn't God good in what he does? And he knows our needs. And, you know, if you spend time in prayer with him, you will hear, he will speak to you through his spirit, the Holy Spirit. And this is what uh, Isaiah 26, 3 says. And I'm reading out of the New King James Spirit for Life Bible. It is just a fantastic Bible with all its notes. So here it is. And it's actually three and four. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for in Yah the Lord is everlasting strength. So I'll just read it again. You will keep him, that's you, me, you will keep us in perfect peace when our minds are stayed on you because we trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for in Yah the Lord is everlasting strength. I'm going to read it again so you can really get it. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Okay, so I just started to do some notes on that. And in the footnotes in this, um, in 26.3, this Bible's got footnotes and stuff. The perfect peace, it says this. Perfect peace is expressed in Hebrew by shalom. Shalom, a Hebrew method of putting great emphasis on a word. You will keep him in everything, in everything the word shalom implies, health, happiness, well-being, peace. The word translated mind is not the usual Hebrew word, but rather a word meaning creative imagination. Isaiah's thought is that he whose creative imagination, the seed of plans and ideas, is firmly founded on the eternal Lord, will enjoy shalom in all its implications. Isn't that amazing? So, the, so in the translation here, whose mind, our mind, is stayed on, our, our mind, sorry, our creative imagination is stayed on God and his promises, regardless of what is happening in the environment around us. So if we stay focused on him in our creative imagination and not allow the enemy to come in, that means that he will keep us in perfect peace. And perfect means can be good or bad sense. So you, um, hang on, sorry, let me just read this. Let me read my notes here. So the mind, that's right. So the mind can run to the negative without being fixed on God. <laughs> Does that sound familiar? Man, I can tell you if, if you, if you deny that that doesn't happen in your mind, well, hello, you're a better saint than me. Cause I know that my, my mind can run to the negative just as easily as it can run to the positive. In fact, I think as human beings, it's our frailty that we tend to run to the negative or my personality is tend to run to the negative more than the, po the positive. And when you look around at all the doomsayers and all the prophetic doom that's being pumped out on mainstream media at the moment, man alive, when you look at it, if you listen that long enough, you just want to slash your wrist and, and go home to heaven or hell or wherever you're going. It's, like, it's just like, hello, get me out of here. But, to, but what God is saying here by his spirit and his word you will, God will keep you in perfect peace when your mind is stayed on him because he trusts in you. And that means you trust in him. So what else have I got in here? So shalom is um, complete welfare, safe, whole health, tranquil, prosperity, rest, harmony, a complete absence of agitation or discourse. How good is that? Now, the interesting thing for me in my faith step is that, is that 
in heaven, there's a book. Everyone's got a book in heaven of what God's dreams and plans for him are. And over my lifetime and my walk with God, I've had heaps and heaps of people prophesy the destiny and the plan that God has for us. It's his dream. And he's got one for you. It's written in the book of heaven for you as well. But he's got an amazing amount of prophecies over my life. And this in here is seven pages. I've compiled it into seven pages of just short paragraphs of what God's dream and plan is for me. And it's interesting, in your journey, God brings people across your path to help you. And one of the people, prophetic people that really helped me was a guy called Graham Cook. And that's Graham H with a H and an E on the end and Cook with an E on the end as well. Graham Cook, an amazing man of God and got a great prophetic uh, ministry um, you know and of the love of God etc but what he did is I went to I a sense well Karen and I sensed that the Holy Spirit told us to go to one of his conferences and when we went there there was what there was much we got out of it but this one thing we got out of it which I want to share with you is this is when you receive a prophecy over your life it's basically what God's dream and plan is for you so all of these things in here are God's dream and plan for Carl John Fechner, me, right? So this is, but this is how he, uh, Graham Cook said, how you can translate that, that prophecy. And it says, um, and I've changed it around. It says, when, when God gets a prophecy over here, Graham Cook says this, this is who I've become. God has opened his heart to me. This is his promise to me. I don't have to ask. He's given me permission proclaim it, decree it, declare it, and thank him. I have permission from him. So I've already personalized that. So I just want to read that to you again. This is who I've become. God has opened his heart to me. This is his promise to me. I don't have to ask or beg him because he's given me permission. So my duty is to proclaim it, decree it, declare it, and thank him because I have permission for him. So all of these prophecies I'd condense down to little short paragraphs and I personalize them so that they have, they, are, they have already happened because that's in God's eyes, the dreams and the destiny and the plans that he has for us, they're already done. In his world, they're already done. It's just us in our fallen humanity that we go to a negative place and, you know, um, you know, don't see it or the devil whispers in our ear, oh, that'll never happen for you, yada, 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 and all the other nonsense. But how you overcome that is just what he's saying in the Zion 26 3 here. And so you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. So, what that, so, so that's just amazing. You know, with that promise there, you will keep him. God will keep me in perfect peace as my mind stays on him, because I trust in him. I trust in him that this will come to pass. And I have been saying this for months and 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 months. And most of it has been intellectual ascent. It hasn't been able to go from here to here. But I can assure you, in the, in the last, I don't know, period of time, six months, it might even be less, I know that that is what God is saying to me. And some of that is because I'm spending a lot of time in prayer with him. I'm not saying I'm a hero with that. That's just God wants us to do. I want to get the mind of God through this. And the Holy Spirit is speaking to me through these and proclaiming it. So in this, in my own heart, this has come to where probably 99% of this, I've now accepted in my heart. This is the reality of it. It doesn't change that. It doesn't change the fact that there's faith steps that I'm actually walking through now to be able to complete that. But how good is God that when I go to look at his word this morning and that in the verse that he told me to look up as for another story, but my Bible falls home to this page. So as I'm, my faith is being tested in, in a particular area of my life, he says this verse to me, he is such a good God. So I encourage, trust that that's encouraging to you. God bless you. Have a great day. God's got a dream and a plan for you. May you find out what that is by spending time with him and have a blessed day. Thank you.